Welcome to Sports and Touring, and today I'm gonna to give you a rundown of carbon fiber lip on the rear boot spoiler, the other carbon fiber parts we've added to the car, plus a complete overview of every modification from the hydraulic lift suspension, the engine tuning, and the Ecutec Connect system. So let's take a look at that boot spoiler. So the boot spoiler is made by a company called Yat based in Thailand. I was a little bit nervous ordering from them at first because you can only interact with them through their Facebook page, but I did a bit of research and I found actually that several other people had had good experiences. So I thought, well, I'll give it a try. And it worked out really well. They were brilliant. They kept me up to date via Facebook Messenger, sending me pictures, letting me know when the parts were being shipped. They were absolutely fantastic and I can't thank them enough. But there's a few things you should know about this spoiler before you go ahead and order it. So first of all, just like any other part that comes off of a mould, it's not quite perfect. Now fortunately, the backing of it has been designed so you can actually sand it away with 600 grade sandpaper. However, foolishly, I allowed a company that gave me the impression that they were able to fit this properly and had experience, uh, but they didn't seem to know that they could do that and unfortunately they ended up sticking it on and it had a bit of a gap between the spoiler and the bodywork so I took it to someone else who had a very good reputation and I actually got to see their work and I was actually very pleased with it so uh, I got their advice and they said well just leave the spoiler on but they'll use some tiger seal just to refine that gap it's the same kind of seal that's used on RWB body kits on a Porsche so I thought if that's good enough for a Porsche it's definitely good enough for my little old Nissan so as you can see here there's actually some seal that's going in between the bodywork and the uh, spoiler. Uh, the, it makes the gap look a little bit bigger than it actually was. It's just that uh, it's because the spoiler kind of curves back in on itself and to get the seal to look kind of straight like this, uh, it was necessary just to kind of put a little bit more of it on just to cover that gap. Yeah, so underneath here, right on the inside corner you can sand that away to actually get it to fit a little bit more snugly and get it a bit closer to the bodywork but of course there is another issue uh, because of the, the way that it fits it actually leaves a bit of a gap a whole sort of finger wide gap so it doesn't actually fit that great however when you stand back from the car i have to say i think it looks absolutely stunning i love it um, I wouldn't really change it for anything. I just want to get the uh, Tiger Seal just lined up a little bit more sharply, a little bit more cleanly. And once that's done, I'll be completely happy with it. But um, yeah, it absolutely looks gorgeous, I think. So just to finish up on the spoiler, this lip is made specifically for the 2015 onwards 370Z Nismo edition. I don't believe it will actually fit onto any other spoiler. However, I'm sure the app will have other parts that might be suitable to your car. So moving on from the spoiler, we've also added carbon fiber B-pillar covers. These are from Evo R supplied by Torken in the UK and the Evo R mirror covers. Now the mirror covers don't actually come with this red stripe. This is an OEM Nismo red stripe. I really wanted to maintain the authenticity of the look. From a distance, I really wanted it to be like that's a Nismo but there's something special about it you can't quite put your finger on it so let's do a full rundown of all of the modifications we've done to the car so far let's start with the exhaust now from factory the 370z is way too quiet and there's an artificial sound that they add in through the speakers. I, I, I'm not a fan. I'm just not a fan of things like that. I, I want a real exhaust note. To solve that, I took the car to Tarmac Sports and they fitted their short tails. So the short tails are a back box delete or muffler delete that removes the silencer from the rear of the car and replaces it with two resonated pipes. So let's take a quick look at the video that we made when we were actually having those fitted. Now that is how it should have sounded from factory in my opinion, spot on, really like it. And since then we've actually had the version 2 Tarmac Sports short tails fitted and they sound even better. And since then the car is just a little bit louder thanks to the Cobra High Flow Cats fitted by Abbey Motorsport. The catalytic converter, as you well know, takes uh, certain impurities out of the exhaust gases, but the way that they're designed at the factory are 
very, very restrictive. You can get sports catalytic converters that actually allow the exhaust gases to flow a little bit more freely, but still do the job of a catalytic converter. We also had some HKS drop-in air filters and that allowed more air to flow into the engine. So overall, we had more air going into the engine and the exhaust gases coming out of the engine more easily. So straight away, that's gonna give you a bit more power. But Abbey Motorsport went one step further and they tuned the car using the Ecotec system. Let's take a quick look at that. Yeah, so that's a 30 horsepower gain. So let's see what the car feels like with the throttle and the extra power, let's see. Noticeable. Definitely noticeable. Noticeable. Even from the passenger seat. So by adding an additional 30 horsepower and 40 newton meters of torque, that takes the car up to an estimated 369 horsepower and 410 newton meters of torque. Now, of course, those aren't big numbers by today's standards, but remember, this is a naturally aspirated engine and a lot of the big power that people are getting from their cars these days is thanks to turbochargers. As well as the additional power, Abbey Motorsport sharpened up the throttle. As you know, most modern cars have fly-by-wire throttles. The accelerator pedal is not physically connected. It's actually just through a set of sensors. As you press the pedal, it tells the engine management system how much power you're asking for. Then the engine management decides how much power you're actually going to get. So what Abbey Motorsport did, they took the existing map, which is very, very sort of progressive, made for more comfortable driving, and they made it much more linear. And I have to say that completely changes the dynamics of the car. That alone just makes the car feel sharper, sportier, and actually more powerful. Now, what's particularly cool about the Ecotec system is you can actually have multiple engine modes. I've got four in total. And uh, you can actually change these live while you're driving along by pressing buttons in a particular sequence on the steering wheel. Now my favourite of all of the engine modes, of course, is the Pops and Bangs map. It sounds absolutely brilliant. You accelerate and then as you lift off, uh, you just get this amazing pop and crackle coming from the exhaust. <laughs> so one of the most surprising features is the variable traction control that's adjustable from the steering wheel. Whether I'm in map two or three, I now have the variable traction control available to me. I switch off the stock traction control. It temporarily hijacks the oil temperature gauge to show you how much traction control you've currently got. And you can either move it up or down. You press and hold up, it gives you the maximum. You press and hold down, it gives you no traction control. And then you can adjust it by very, very fine amounts in between. Uh, we tested that out at Brunting Thought Proving Ground. And well, let's just take a quick look. So it's got maximum traction control on. That's pretty good. Yeah, that's uh, basically stopped me from spinning up the wheels while I was turning. So much, much less invasive than the uh the stock traction control definitely yeah yeah it's actually a lot nicer so it's going to turn it right the way down now traction control is completely off Ooh. yep so it fully 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 spins and then And another cool thing about the Ecotec system is that you can get the Ecotec Connect. Now this is an OBD2 dongle that plugs into the car and transmits a secure Bluetooth signal that allows you to use an app to not only change what engine mode you're in, but also see just about every sensor on the car. Also, if you actually get a check engine light, it allows you to see what fault code was thrown and even allows you to clear down those fault codes. And one of the cool things about it is it also allows you to do live data logging. Now, when I had the engine tuned, there was a couple of things that I wanted to potentially tweak. So I actually ran the data logging and emailed that back to Abbey Motorsport. They looked over the logging and the next time I popped down there, they had an update to the map ready for me. They were able to just plug it in, flash the car and it was good to go. But it's all the dials you can get on the app. It's just amazing. I like it so much. I have that on pretty much all the time. I actually find it quite useful. I mean, some of the dials I've got on there are really just because it looks cool. 
Finally, let's talk about the suspension. So the suspension, I think, on the 370Z sits just a little bit too high. Even the Nismo is actually about 10 millimeters lower than the standard 370Z, but I still feel it could have been just a little bit lower. So I've completely replaced the suspension with the KW V3 coilover system. The KW V3s are three-way adjustable, so that means you can adjust the height, the bump, and the rebound. For those that don't know, the bump is the compression of the suspension, and the rebound is the extension of the suspension. So you can adjust by how much you want that to happen, which can kind of change the driving dynamics of the car. Sitting lower with a slightly more stiffer suspension system, it really does grip around the corners like it's on rails by comparison to the standard suspension system. I went out for a drive with uh, a guy called Joel who's got a channel called It's Joel and uh, even he commented on how particularly like grippy the car really feels on the road. He said, That was quite an experience actually. It's really, really stiff, really fun, really fast, and very noisy as well. And I like that a lot. But it sticks. This, it always oh, sticks, yeah. That would be, I would love this as sort of a, a weekend toy, definitely. Anyway, back to the suspension. I really, really wanted the car set up in, in a way that really just worked for me. I want to be able to track it, which is why I wanted to go for the coilover system, but I also wanted to make it over speed bumps. It would not get over the speed bumps at this particular ride height. So the front lift actually makes life so much easier. So these were also fitted by Abbey Motorsport. Uh, Abbey have done an amazing job at figuring out where to put the pump for the lift system. It's got an awesome button on the interior. Press that, lifts the front drops it back down and obviously if you've lifted the front maybe to get onto your driveway when you turn the engine off it lowers itself back down again so that's it all the modifications to this car so far but not all the modifications still to come and once again thanks to everybody who's subscribed to the channel and thank you to everyone who's liked commented and shared our videos on social media it makes such a big difference to growing the channel and the more we grow the channel the more opportunities we'll have to make great content and bring that to you and if you haven't subscribed already make sure you hit the subscribe button hit the bell icon choose notifications for all videos and i'll see you next time on sports and touring